Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I am Ruri McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. A federal appeals court in the United States has ordered Texas to reinstate its ban on most abortions. The ruling on Friday came after another court suspended the fetal heartbeat law. Although abortion clinics resumed activities when the law was suspended, they will now have to stop such procedures as it has once again taken effect. A three-judge Fifth Circuit panel gave the Justice Department time until Tuesday to respond to Texas's filings. Earlier on Friday, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton had appealed the ruling by U.S. District Judge Robert Pittman in Austin, prohibiting the state from enforcing the fetal heartbeat law that bans women from undergoing an abortion after six weeks of pregnancy. The lawsuit has triggered a fierce legal battle over abortion, with many states in the country trying to bring in pro-life laws to curb termination of pregnancy. In what is said to be the largest gathering of people in the Vatican since the COVID-19 pandemic broke out, almost 3,000 believers came to St Peter's Basilica on Sunday to take part in the Holy Mass offered by Pope Francis, marking the beginning of the Synod on Synodality. The Holy Father reminded bishops that the Synod should not be viewed as a church convention or a political event. Instead, it is a journey of spiritual discernment that takes place in adoration, prayer and dialogue with the Word of God. The Pope said that the Synod should be a grace-filled process that is guided by the Holy Spirit. Before the bishops gather in Rome in 2023, there will be a diocesan, national and continental process of discussion on a whole range of topics involving the Church. Next Sunday, every diocese in the world will open their own Synod and hold listening sessions in parishes guided by a series of questions issued by the Vatican. The Archbishop of the Spanish city of Toledo has apologised to his believers, clergy and religious for the shooting of a music video with sensual content inside the cathedral. On October the 8th, Archbishop Francisco Cero Chavez issued a statement apologising for the misuse of the cathedral, saying that he was absolutely unaware of the project, its content and final result. He also said he disapproves of the images recorded in the sanctuary. The prelate sought forgiveness from believers, priests and religious who were hurt by the incident. A day earlier, Spanish rapper Tangana had recorded a video for his song Ateo, that is Atheist, in the cathedral along with Argentine singer Nati Peluso. The bishop has also pledged to issue a protocol to be maintained while shooting images within churches or religious establishments. The Belgian Catholic Apostolate of Faith and Light that conducts pilgrimages for mentally challenged people is celebrating its Golden Jubilee this month. The Apostolate consists of 1,420 communities of people with intellectual disabilities, their families and friends spread across 86 countries in five continents. It was established by Belgian nationals Jean Vanier, Marie-Hélène Mathieu and some parents of children with intellectual disabilities on Easter Monday of 1971 in Lourdes in France. They caused a sensation by taking 4,000 mentally handicapped people to the Marian Sanctuary along with their parents and friends in order to pray, sing and share testimonies. The Jubilee Mass was celebrated by Bishop Jean Cockerells of the Archdiocese of Mechelen, Brussels in the Church of St John Berchmans in Aetherbeek on October the 3rd, with the Mass being attended by members of six communities. Expressing support for the Polish Constitutional Court's ruling that some of the laws of the European Union are not compatible with the Constitution, Prime Minister Viktor Orban of Hungary called on EU institutions to respect the sovereignty of member states. On Saturday, Orban signed a government's decree hailing the ruling of the Constitutional Court of Poland. The right-leaning governments of Poland and Hungary are noted for their support of the traditional family, the sanctity of life, opposition to LGBT agendas and their backing of judicial independence. The two nations are considered to be allies and often support each other's causes. Budapest blamed EU institutions for trying to take away certain competencies from member states. The court ruling came after Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki asked it if EU institutions could prevent the nation from reorganising the judiciary. Believers in the US state of Tennessee joined their Christian Republican Governor Bill Lee to observe a day of prayer and fasting for the state on Monday, October the 11th. It was on Sunday that Governor Lee signed a proclamation inviting everyone to observe October the 11th as a day of prayer and fasting, imploring God's guidance and blessing for the state, as well as to ask for healing, grace and favour for the days ahead. 
A father of four children and grandfather of eight, he resides on his ranch in Franklin with his wife Maria. The governor and his wife are known as strong believers who attend the Grace Chapel Church. They're also active in various faith-based ministries that are engaged in charitable work in third world countries. As the Catholic Church in France reels from revelations of clerical sex abuse, almost a dozen lay people have launched a hashtag campaign on Twitter, seeking justice and help for the victims, and a reform in the manner in which the church is administered. The individuals involved include Erwan Le Mordehek, a lawyer and essayist. The hashtag entitled My Church Too is trending in France and is aimed at showing the desire of the laity to bring about changes in the church and heal wounds. While some other lay people have vented their anger against the manner in which the bishops handle the abuse cases, there are appeals to the prelates to include more lay people in the decision-making process and to have constructive dialogue. On Sunday, Pope Francis met with a Colombian missionary nun who was a hostage of Islamist militants in Mali for more than four years. After being released from captivity, Sister Gloria Cecilia Narvaez met the Holy Father before he celebrated Holy Mass in St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican, announcing the opening of the Synod on Synodality. The nun, who belongs to the Franciscan Sisters of Mary Immaculate Congregation, was kidnapped in 2017 while working as a missionary in Kutiala in Mali. Islamists raided her residence and when they tried to abduct the youngest nun there, Sister Gloria volunteered to take her place. She had been serving in the community there for 12 years. It is unclear if a ransom was paid in exchange for her release. Pope Francis has exhorted the Latin Rite Catholics in Russia to become an evangelical seed that with joy and humility delivers a limpid transparency of God's kingdom. In a message sent to the community, the Holy Father expressed his closeness with them as they celebrate the 30th anniversary of the re-establishment of the Apostolic Administrations for Latin Rite Catholics in Russia following the fall of the Soviet Union. The Pope expressed his hope that the entire community will continue on a vocational path, reaching out to all in communion because being a witness is pleasing to God and beneficial to society. He stated that the anniversary is an opportunity to grow by following the gospel rather than simply remembering what he termed juridical acts. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.